Okay, it's Emma, Neuromuscular Therapy 1. Um, today we are in demo number 10, where we're gonna talk about the glutes and tensor fascia lata. Um, I link these two together largely because I think of TFL as a fancy glute muscle, basically. Um, and they generally cause discomfort that is referred to as lumbago, SI joint discomfort, or trochanteric bursitis. So this word lumbago is something that like comes from our grandparents, great-grandparents era, era, era. And really it's a generalized discomfort that isn't even in the lumbar spine. That's why the word lumbago is so confusing. It's actually just below the iliac crest and a band that runs across there. Um, when I have a client who comes into me and tells me that they have low back discomfort that they want addressed, I always have them show me where their low back discomfort is because so often they tell me, oh, I've got low back pain and I'm instantly like, oh, okay, yeah. QL, iliopsoas, erector spinae, let's see what's going on. But then they show me and they say, oh, my pain is like right here. And I'm like, well, that's not your lumbar spine. That's down in your hips. Okay, your idea of what your lumbar spine is and mine are definitely a little different. Really common, don't correct your client, but just know that this is lumbago. <laughs> this is low back. Anyways, um, the glutes tend to, when they're dysfunctional, cause pain that runs all along underneath the iliac crest. Um, that's most common with glute major. Um, glute minor tends to be a little bit more discomfort along the SI joint. And then glute minimus tends to be more deep pain, um, more pain kind of towards the anterior aspect of the hip. Then when we get into TFL, it generates a weird discomfort that mimics trochanteric bursitis. And that's where that true trochanteric bursitis is that lovely bursa that's underneath the expansion of where glute major and TFL come together and become the IT band, so a very dense piece of tissue. And as it rolls over the greater trochanter, there is a nice little bursa there, a nice little fluid-filled pillow to prevent that really rigid, dense tissue from grating over that bony prominence. So when that gets irritated, it's called trochanteric bursitis, um, which is pretty persnickety, but oftentimes you'll encounter clients who have what's determined to be trochanteric bursitis, and it's not responding to any of the standard medical treatments, largely injecting them with cortisone. And you'll find that TFL is just incredibly tight and short. And with treating that, oftentimes that trochanteric pain will go away. So large reason why we're addressing these guys all together. So first off, I'm gonna wanna get at this tissue. Um, before I do, I might just kind of say hello to my client's body over my drape. Just kind of some nice cat pawing. Kind of gives me just a sensation of where her bones are, what all this tissue looks like. Saying hello all the way down my client and then I'm going to drape the leg. So a nice glute drape. Um, no matter how you do your glute drape, you're always gonna find yourself having to reposition it a little bit. Um, so just be prepared for that. But I know you guys always are concerned about glute drapes. So mine is very simple as you just saw. It is pretty darn secure. So what I do is I'm gonna take my sheet and I'm gonna throw it over the midline of my client's body. I'm gonna grab part of this middle sheet I'm gonna slide it to the inner thigh of my client. I'm gonna take hold of the tissue above. I'm gonna slide my fingers underneath my client's thigh and I'm gonna maintain that contact where I'm pressing the sheet into her thigh. I'm gonna grab my upper sheet, pull it around the glutes and then tuck it very securely in underneath or above her hip. And that gives me a pretty nice secure drape there. I've got this hip. So now I'm gonna to want to just continue doing a little bit of compressions in there. And you can always do glute work 
over your drape as well if your client is modest, if you're uncomfortable with glute drapes, if it just keeps migrating so much, um, you've got options. But so on this tissue, I just like to do a little cat pawing to say hello to it. Getting a nice feel for the glutes. Um, make sure that you are coming underneath the ischial tuberosity. So I guess first we should do a really quick anatomy of you review. Where are we going for today? So the glutes as a group start all the way on the ASIS, connect all the way underneath the iliac crest, all the way to the SI joint, all the way down the SI joint, and then they're all going to come in to the greater trochanter. So making sure that you can find the greater trochanter is really important. Um, I take a nice palm, fingers away from my client's midline, and just kind of feel in there, and you're going to feel a nice bony round there. That's going to be the greater trochanter. So glute maximus, which is more on the posterior aspect and all down the sacrum, is actually going to scoop around and then migrate in towards the greater trochanter. It does not anchor on the trochanter. It becomes this giant ligamentous-like structure called the IT band that runs all the way down the lateral part of the leg and is going to connect on the distal knee, distal tibia. Well, I said it's superior tibia. Um, and it's also going to join the TFL, which also becomes that IT band. Glute medius is deep to glute maximus, so it's going to attach a little bit lower on that superior or that posterior aspect of the anominate, kind of right over the midline, and it's going to come down and it attaches onto a little bit more of the posterior aspect of that greater trochanter. Deep to that and a little bit more towards the front of our client's body is that glute minimus that's going to come down and connect onto a little bit more of an anterior portion of that greater trochanter. So really we're dealing with the muscles in this whole zone here. Pretty easy to treat. Deep to all of them are the deep hip rotators. We'll get at them um, in our next session. So I've done some nice cat pawing in all of these muscles. Now I'm just going to want to do some nice feeling around, feeling if I have any adhesions anywhere in this tissue. I like to use a palm and kind of move the tissue away from the sacrum. I'm not afraid to take my palm and put it on the sacrum and glide that tissue laterally. And on Cassandra, I actually feel a lot of restrictions right along that SI joint. And then as I come right onto the most superior aspect of the iliac crest, I feel some limitation in there as well. And then come down, palpating through all of that. So I kind of have an idea of where I've got some limitations in here. I'm going to work over the sheet because I don't have any lotion on. I'm going to take my elbow. Really, I'm actually taking the blade of my forearm. And I'm going to slide my elbow in this nice place that it rests. So I've got in front of my forearm, I have the greater trochanter. Below my elbow, I've got um, the ischial tuberosity. And then medially to me, I can start to feel a little bit of the sacrum. And in this spot, I'm going to put some nice downward pressure. And I'm just going to move that tissue in towards the sacrum and just do some nice, simple gliding that way. More than anything, I'm just pulling the tissue that direction. I'm going to reposition myself ever so slightly above that and do that glide again. Gliding that tissue towards the SI joint and moving up. And you do not want to put aggressive weight on this olecranon process. If you do that, you're going to go through the glutes and find yourself on the deep hip rotators, which have their own reason to go there, but we're trying to target these glutes. And they're a little resistant to being addressed. So really a grabbing that more superficial tissue, but grabbing that superficial tissue firmly and moving everything towards that sacrum. And kind of remembering that I've got this nice fan-shaped arrangement that I'm going for. So I'm just kind of like following each ray of that fan.
and I'm just continually changing my direction as I go around that greater trochanter and move towards the sacrum. Now I'm going to be moving towards the iliac crust. When I get at some point to the side of my client's body, I'm all of a sudden finding myself on that elbow. It's really uncomfortable for my client. Plus, I'm probably going to be going through the glutes and getting into those deep hip rotators. So I'm going to switch working arms and go to my other forearm and have it do that nice upward swoop. And it's going to take that sharp, stabby pressure away from my olecranon into the work I'm doing. And then come all the way around the side of my client's body. So now I've done some nice superficial lengthening of these muscles. Now I'm going to do what's called, I call, the double dipping dolphin. So I'm going to take my hands and I'm going to overlay them on top of each other. I'm going to take my fingers, scoop around the greater trochanter. I'm going to dive my fingers down, so I'm like my dolphin going underneath the water. Then I'm going to move my body in as my dolphin comes up and breaches and drops down and scoops again. And so I've got my double dipping dolphin as I move from my greater trochanter towards the SI joint and then eventually up towards the greater trochanter. I mean, sorry, up towards the iliac crest. So diving down, moving forward, diving down, moving forward, repositioning, diving down, moving forward, diving down, moving forward. I'm going to continue my double dipping dolphin as I go up, but now that I've done some more superficial work through this glute, when I came into my double dipping dolphin here, I felt a really good density in tissue that I'm pretty sure is in that glute max. So I'm going to identify that tissue and pause my double dipping dolphin there, move my arms into a good, strong, straight position so my shoulders, elbows, wrists are all aligned and sink my weight into that. Sometimes the specific of an approach is going to be too specific for these glutes because again it's easy to go through them and end up in the deep hip rotators. If that's the case I'm going to keep track of where my trigger point is and then move in with not my olecranon process but pretty close to it. I've got a pretty firm tissue type there. And I'm going to set that then into my glute and hang out. And so my pressure is not down. If my pressure is down towards the table, I'm going to be going into the deep hip rotators. Instead, I'm kind of hooking that tissue and moving it toward the SI joint. And I'm going to hang out there. Generally, glute dysfunction takes a minute to get it to soften up. Little fluttering of the fingers. Little jiggling out. That felt really nice. Then I'm going to go right back to my double dipping dolphin. So my double dipping dolphin is kind of too focused. It is lengthening out this tissue. It's also letting me palpate all the planes of the glutes and seeing if I need to pause and address something. And I found another one that I need to address, so I'm just going to rock right into it, connect with that density, and I'm going to move it towards this case. It's going towards the top of the SI joint. You may have just saw it, but Cassandra's muscle gave me a nice little twitch, which is always an awesome sign that you've got a little trigger point in there that's got some neurological stimulation. Do a little fluttering of my fingers, shimmying of the tissue, wiggle myself out of there. Come back to my double dipping dolphin. And I'm just systematically moving through this whole fan array of my glutes. Sometimes your double dipping dolphin might become a three dipping dolphin, especially as you get towards kind of the top of that iliac crust. Ooh, and there we go. I found another lovely density in that tissue that I'd like to address. So nice little palpation in there. I'm pretty sure that's going to be in glute minimus, given where it is and how deep it is and how short that span is. So I'm going to try my elbow this way. I feel myself sinking down, not really sinking into it. So I'm like, I've got to reposition. So I'm going to spin and face my client, get low, and press in 
So I'm moving that glute tissue again towards the sacrum. Or I could switch my position a little bit and move it a little bit more towards the iliac crest. But again, at that downward pressure, you're not going to be treating the glutes. You're going to be treating the deep hip rotators. Nice little release there. Moving through, coming back, finishing up my double dipping dolphin. Ooh, that released really nicely. All right, so now I've gone around, done all that sort of work. Then I'm going to want to do my plus minuses on all of these attachments. Um, with the greater trochanter, um, for glute medius and glute minimus, they're kind of right at the top here. You can take your fingers, scoop in there, and do little plus minuses that way. I find that to be surprisingly hard on my fingers because you're going through a lot of this expansion of tissue as it becomes the IT band. So what works better for me is to take a hand on my clients kind of above their knee, take a good finger or even a broad forearm, set it on that posterior aspect of the greater trochanter, and then just simply rock their leg in and out. So a little bit of medial, a little lateral rotation. And my elbow is now doing that little bit of cross fiber work all around that greater trochanter. And in this case, you are definitely treating some of the deep hip rotators, totally fine. Because again, we're just resetting those proprioceptors. I come up, move to, you might have to repalpate, find the top of that trochanter, soften my wrist. This is a pretty taut tissue spot. A little bit more of that rocking. And migrate all the way around it. You can also grab lower on the leg if you need to, whatever works best for your client. No. That's the work there of Cassandra. And I'm going to come through, just do some nice palmer circles through all this tissue, making sure that I've done a nice job loosening that up. Then I'm going to take my fingers, I'm going to find the most anterior aspect of that iliac crust. And with supported fingers, I'm going to just follow and do my little plus minuses on all those attachments. Oftentimes, as you're doing this, I'm going to find areas that really could use a bit more work, especially right underneath that iliac crest. It's really hard for me to pull that tissue. So I'm going to come to generally the opposite side of the table and the top of the table, slide my fingers in, and then push that tissue away from that iliac crest. And just kind of scooping out and then doing my little plus minuses. And I'm going to follow that line. I'm going to migrate so now I'm right at the top of the SI joint. And I'm going to keep scooping that tissue out. And again, know that you are treating a bit of the deep hip rotators as you're going. Oftentimes, you'll end up combining doing work through the glutes and the deep hip rotators. But it's important to know that if you're addressing the glutes, they're more superficial, and that pressure needs to be going towards the SI joint or towards the greater trochanter, not down towards the front of the table. Down towards the front of the table, you're definitely getting those deep hip rotators. Now, I find a lot of people get really nervous as they start migrating their way down the sacrum. Um, don't. Take care of all of this muscle attachment. Um, if your clients, you know, you may ask your client, are you comfortable if I work this line of the SI joint? Um, but as you go, they're going to realize that you're in a very appropriate and professional place. Um, when you get to the bottom of the SI joint, your fingers are naturally going to migrate laterally as you're going to be following back over to that greater trochanter. So now I've done a really nice job addressing all of the fibers of the posterior aspects of those glutes. 
Now I'm going to flip my client over so I can address TFL and then get all the way down through the IT band. Occasionally you will have a client whose natural position for their lower leg is in a really turned out position and it might be easier for you to address the IT band here. Um, I find that less often than the case, but just know you have access. So I'm gonna really quickly pull my drape, reposition Cassandra, and then Cassandra, I'm gonna have you roll over onto your back and slide down so your head's on the table. All right. And for sake of videoing, we'll do this side. All right, so now we have our client flipped over. We are going to address TFL, and it gives us a bit more space if we want to to get at glute medius, glute minimus. So I'm going to drape my client's leg. And just so you don't think I'm lazy, Cassandra prefers not to have a bolster. <laughs> so nice tuck drape on the inner thigh. I'm going to pull the drape up and tuck it underneath my client. So I have a good exposure of all this tissue. I particularly want to be able to get at everything below the iliac crest. So really quickly landmarking, I can put my hand on the front of Cassandra's hip. My palm will naturally fall into that ASIS, which gives me a good landmark for where I'm at. I can feel all the way up around her iliac crest. I can come over laterally and I can feel this good bony ridge here. That's gonna be my greater trochanter. I can also come and look at Cassandra's leg and I want to identify where this IT band is. The IT band is going to is a really interesting dense structure. So the IT band I've kind of alluded to it. It is the attachment site for both tensor fascia lata and glute maximus. Both of those muscles are going to encapsulate the greater trochanter and then that tendon tissue is going to transition into tissue type that's more akin to a ligament than is actually akin to a tendon. It's very dense, it's very, um, it's not very pliable. It's not like a nice stretchy tendon. And this is gonna come down the side of the leg and attaches all the way down into the lateral aspect of the tibial plateau. It also has slips that attach onto the fibular head, which is just interesting for some other reasons. So we'll talk about when we talk about the knee. But for right now, we've got this. One thing that I find, well, first off, is the IT band is this natural separation between the quads and the hamstrings. Um, it historically, people end up with pain in this lateral part of the leg, and they assume it's IT band syndrome. And they do all sorts of things, like get foam rollers, tennis balls and they just start really aggressively rolling out and manipulating this tissue. You'll see massage therapists taking an olecranon process and stripping out this IT band. This IT band is basically a gigantic, very dense ligament. It doesn't have much blood supply. You can roll this tissue out until the cows come home. You can shove elbows in there and do whatever you want to it, but you're basically not going to increase circulation to that tissue because it doesn't really have a blood supply. It's torturous for your client and it doesn't do anything except for create inflammation in the surrounding tissue. So don't torture your client by overworking this IT band. What can happen with an IT band though is it can get very sticky and the lateral quad, the vastus lateralis, or the lateral hamstring, the bicep femoris, can get stuck fascially to that IT band. So then whenever the quad needs to fire or the hamstring needs to fire, it's not able to glide because it's fascially adhered to that IT band and you'll get dysfunction in the fascia and that muscle right next to the IT band. So if your client is having discomfort around the IT band, it's probably not the IT band itself. It is most likely either vastus lateralis or bicep femoris that have dysfunctions that can be addressed to it. A win, glute maximus and or tensor fascia lata is chronically tight. It's gonna create excessive pull into that IT band. And what you're gonna find is what's called IT band friction syndrome. 
And that is where this IT man goes over the lateral epicondyle. It's now kept excessively tight. And so every time your client bends and extends their knee, it's flipping over this lateral epicondyle. And eventually it's going to start fraying that tissue and causing inflammation. This is what's classically called runner's knee. So when your client comes into you with runner's knee, generally what they're going to present with is very pinpoint sensitivity at the lateral knee, usually right at that lateral epicondyle. And we have a tendency as therapists to then want to come in and do all this aggressive work here. Well, this tissue is already inflamed. Why it's inflamed is because this whole system is too tight. If you work on just this IT band, you're just going to create more inflammation and not create any real tissue change. But what you can change is what's going on with the tensor fascia lata and glute maximus as they become this IT band. So when you encounter this smart therapy, take a look at TFL, take a look at glute max. So we've done a pretty nice job treating glute max from the posterior, but know if you're dealing with an IT band syndrome and the way that you're doing your treatment, you don't have time to roll your client prone. You're going to be doing all your work today with your client supine. You can get at all of kind of the more anterior attachments of this glute by working over here. You can slide underneath your client a little bit and get at some of this posterior aspect of glute maximus. So you can do a pretty good job in there. But what we really want to get to today is this tensor fascia lata. As you put your hand on the front of this iliac crest, this strong muscle you're going to feel right there, it's like a shelf your hand's naturally just going to sit on in between that iliac crest and the greater trochanter. That's your tensor fascia lata. So, really easy muscle to get at. I like to go back right to my double dipping dolphin here. And so I'm going to go from my greater trochanter and just swoop up, reposition a few times, and move that tissue towards the iliac crest. Again, you can always be working over your sheet if that's easier for you. And I'm going to do passes on the most anterior aspect of it right over the middle of it and right on the posterior aspect of it. And whoo, for Cassandra, this is incredibly tight right here. If you haven't had a chance to treat glute maximus, you're then going to extend that work, pressing up into that iliac crest, taking care of all those planes. But we've already taken care of that today. So now that I've done that double dipping dolphin, I'm going to come into my greater trochanter and just do some nice circles in here to soften up this tissue. Now I'd really like to get at the TFL, which has a lot to do with hip flexion. So I can take my nice soft part of my forearm and set it in that tissue. And then what I like to do is what I call forearm rolling. So I'm actually going to start with my hand in a nice supinated position, and I'm just going to roll it into pronation. And in doing that, I have hooked the tissue on the, my ulnar blade. And I am, as I'm rolling my arm, that tissue is moving superiorly as that ulnar blade rotates. And I'm going to reposition and work through there. How's that feel, Cassandra? Good. You can work a little bit more medially. If you end up a little too medially, you're just going to end up on pectineus, and that's okay. You'll end up a little bit on sartorius. You'll end up a little bit on the uh, rectus femoris. All of those are okay if you get to. <laughs> Moving through, and I'm just going to work through all of that aspect of that tensor fascia lata. And it's a pretty rectangular shaped muscle in here. So I generally find myself kind of working in several passes on it. I know. And so when you find spots that are pretty sensitive, which this is a zone I identified when I was doing that double dipping dolphin, I might just hang out and just kind of iron it out a little bit. And in doing so, I've identified that this is a zone that I would like to do some ischemic compression with. 
And so instead of doing anything crazy, I'm just going to reposition my pressure. Um, generally, if you're on the more lateral aspect of TFL, um, pressure works better if you push in towards your client as opposed to down. If you press down, it's really easy on this muscle to flop off of it, and it's just uncomfortable for your client. So I generally come in, I sit with my back towards my client, I might even support my fist a little bit, and then just gently press back into that muscle. And so I am not like using my bicep to push back, I'm just simply using my whole weight supporting my shoulder to rock back. So my weight's forward, I'm just rocking back into that. How does that feel? And if you can't tell if that muscle's releasing or not through your forearm, and it really is more of like my tricep that's pressing into Cassandra, not my olecranon process, I can always take another finger and kind of slide it in there and get a feel. Or I can ask my client, Cassandra, has that discomfort subsided a bit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm gonna just slide out. Don't be afraid to ask your client. They don't expect you to be all knowing. So now walking through that, oh, that feels so lovely. Yay! So I'm going to finish taking care of the true TFL by just doing a little bit of plus minuses underneath the iliac crest and moving forward. Now I want to take care of this IT band. So as we said, doing true work in that IT band is just going to be really torturous to your client and isn't really going to do any benefit to the tissue. I mean, if your client really likes being tortured, you're not going to do too much harm, <laughs> but it's just for nothing. So what I like to do is, again, go back to my palm and just do some gentle gliding where my thenar and ulnar eminences are kind of hooking into that IT band. And I'm just going to move it medially, kind of rocking up onto that vastus lateralis. And what I'm doing there is just kind of get a feeling for how the IT band may be stuck to the vastus lateralis. And I'm going to walk that all the way down till I'm in line with the patella. I'm then going to take my hands below the IT band and do the same thing, pulling bicep femoris up and over that IT band. On Cassandra, as I do this, I'm feeling a little bit of restriction between bicep femoris and the IT band when I get way up here. So I'm going to want to do a little bit of work to separate those two out. I'm going to come down to the level of my client. I'm going to slide my fingers in to that posterior line of the IT band. And I'm probably just going to kind of jiggle my fingers back and forth, seeing if I can free that bicep femoris from the IT band. How does that feel, Cassandra? Yeah, so this is not this brutal stabbing work that you see people doing or talking about with their IT band. And I'm just going to follow it down. If I have any sort of IT band stuff going on, I may just follow this line connecting bicep femoris. And that anyways, I probably will also do a treatment to the hamstring group and the quad group. Similarly, though, if I had felt some sort of restriction between vastus lateralis and the IT band, I'm going to come from a top-down approach. I'm usually going to use my thumbs. And again, I'm on that vastus lateralis right above the IT band in that line between the two. And I'm just kind of jiggling in there. This is not deep, aggressive, brutal work. I am coaxing this tissue to act as individuals. I am separating the IT band from my vastus lateralis. I'm going to follow that up. I'm kind of going to lose that line as I get close to the greater trochanter. Then I'm going to come down. I'm going to come down to where I have this IT band attachment, and I'm basically going to do quote unquote bone massage. I'm going to do some nice big circles through all these bony ridges, lateral to the patella. I'm going to come down onto the tibial plateau a little bit. 
I'm going to get onto that fibular head and just do some nice circulatory style circles through all of this tissue here. And, and that is what I'm going to do to treat the glutes and tensor fasciae. Thanks, Cassandra. Thank you.